This video is a general guide that will take you through the steps to fit a TA65S long range auxiliary fuel tank to a 2007 200 series Toyota Land Cruiser without the factory sub tank option. To get started we'll place the supplement in the owner's manual on the back page opposite the gas station information while we are still clean. Now we will unclip a few dash pieces to access the wiring and fit the switch. Start with the panel containing the mirror controls by first pulling out the top of the thin panel next to the steering column. Unclip these side trim panels on the centre console to access two bolts so we can remove the two side trims. Pull out the power socket surround to gain access to the wiring but do not completely remove it. Remove both the right hand side door sill trims. Unclip the top of the bottom half of the right hand side plastic trim lining in the rear cargo area. Pass approximately one and a half metres of cable through the floor grommet near the jack and secure in place. Run the three core wire from the rear along the right hand side sill to under the dash area. Select a position for the switch. We recommend the top right blank panel. Mark the center and drill a pilot hole then a 20 mm hole and file to size for a neat fit. A little extra filing will also be required on the main switch panel to suit the new round switch. Connect all the wiring as per the electrical diagram provided in the fitting instructions. We can now remove the spare wheel and raise the vehicle. Support the axle housing, remove the rear right hand wheel and inner guard for access to the filler. Remove this nut from the filler mounting. Undo the two inside bolts from the inner guard between the bumper and the mud flap. Starting at the rear of the muffler, Disconnect the last three rubber exhaust mounts. Remove this small spare tyre support bracket from the front cross member. Then completely remove the spare tyre support cross member and small brackets either side. We need to modify this by elongating the two holes at either end towards the centre by approximately 3mm. Then drill a 10mm hole in approximately 20 millimetres from either end in the centre and cut a V section out. Also using a grinder, trim the cross member at either end by grinding straight between these corners. Lastly, drill out the two captive nuts on both the small side brackets to 8 millimetre clearance. We will now prepare the area ready for the tank by bending the rear tyre support down by 15 millimetres. Cut the tank support mounts from the floor ribs. We have not opened the fuel system yet, but ensure safety with fuel or fumes present when cutting metal. Now we can bend the small steel pipe on the filler assembly up by approximately 10 millimetres. Disconnect the filler assembly from the tank and remove from the vehicle. Here, we measure down 200 millimetres from the end and cut both pipes. Deburr and clean the metal filings from the pipe. Refit the shortened filler back to the tank, fasten the hose clamps and fit the lower mounting bolt. With a suitable sealant, fit the brass fittings to the pump and align as per the photo in the fitting instructions. We can now mount the transfer pump to the bottom edge of the steel inner guard, fitting the earth wire in the process. As per our plumbing diagram, connect all the hoses to their respective fittings. Now we can run the transfer hose and wiring 
along the steel filler and cable tie in place. You will need to leave the hose hanging down in front of the cross member and terminate the cable with spade terminals and leave approximately 230mm excess from the floor rib to the end of the harness. At this stage, temporarily connect the sender and we'll test the operation. The gauge should be on empty, indicated by one red LED. The pump should be audible when turned on and the yellow pump LED will illuminate and the red LED should now be flashing. You can also move the float arm and watch the gauge go up after a minute or so to illuminate the green LEDs. We can now fit the sender unit to the Long Ranger with the screws and gasket supplied. This has been set up in our factory for correct depth and should only fit in one position due to the hole orientation. With a suitable sealant, fit the brass elbow to the tank, aiming the barb towards the centre and parallel with the bottom of the tank. Lift the tank into position and have the left hand side bracket below the chassis rail while lifting the back up over the small bracket. Once you have the back up, connect the wiring to the sender before lifting the front into its final position and fit the front upper bolts on either side first. Fit the left hand side bracket with two original bolts and a new bolt on a tag supplied in the kit. Temporarily fit the remaining two bolts in the right hand side by only a couple of threads. Now tighten all the other mounting bolts. You can now remove these two loose bolts and refit the cross member into place, loosely fitting all the bolts to ensure they line up before tightening. Refit all the three rubber exhaust mounts, starting at the rear first. Fit the new twin filler into place, ensuring a neat fit in the grommet. Double check all hose clamps and fittings. Secure all loose hoses around the filler to ensure they will not chafe on the body lip. Connect the 12mm auxiliary fast fill breather and the 8mm pickup to their respective fittings on the tank. Refit the inner guard, mud flap and the wheel. Clean yourself up and replace all the interior trim and tidy the area from your fingerprints and off cuts of wire. And that's about it. You can now refit the spare wheel and hand the vehicle back to the owner.